What's up, gangsters? Uh, it is uh, Thursday, August the what? 23rd uh, out here at Rube Goldberg Enterprises. And it's one of those days where I don't know if I'm going to get anything productive done. So, of course, these are the days that I subject all of you people to my video nonsense. But this time I want to try and actually do something helpful. <laughs> um, if you are one of the members of the Horde on Scale Modeler's Critique Group, you know that uh, we, and by we of course I mostly mean uh, I, <laughs> are uh, constantly harping on our group members to post better photos. Now, I'm not a total dick about pictures because of being some kind of photography snob. It's because we are genuinely trying to make the experience in the group as effective for everybody as possible, uh, both for the readers of your thread and for the people who are making threads looking for feedback on their work. I mean, look, the bottom line, undeniable fact is that the better people can see what you're doing, the more helpful they can be. And uh, so, not only do we encourage people to take uh, well-focused, well-lit, uh, close-up images of their, uh, of their stuff, but uh, we encourage people to post lots of them. However, um, some guys have gotten the idea that you have to be a professional photographer, or at least that you have to have a so-called real camera like a DSLR in order to take good pictures. And that is just simply not true. You can take great pictures with your phone camera. Um, uh, but I think some guys just legitimately don't know how. And I've talked about it a little bit, but it's buried somewhere in the middle of some other thing about some other thing. So I thought, hey, why not just do a uh, hopefully quick how to uh, take good pictures at your workbench with your iPhone. So, here we go. Okay, now, I know I did specifically just say iPhone, and yes, that does reflect my personal bias because I'm all Apple all the time. And I am gonna show you uh, how to do this using my iPhone, because that's what I have. But, obviously, you can do this with any uh, phone, and we don't have to get into the argument about, you know, Android versus iOS or any of that stuff. I mean, everybody already knows Apple phones are the best. So that's already been settled. <laughs> anyway, um, some of the apps that I'm going to show you are available on multiple platforms. So it doesn't have to be an iPhone. Um, but obviously the materials you're going to need are your phone camera. And then the other thing, okay? And this is where people fall down uh, mostly on using their camera phone and taking workbench photos is light. You have to have a lot of light. Um, the iPhone in particular has one of, if not the best, camera phone sensors out there, but it's still a little tiny thing. I mean, it's literally like that big, whereas the sensor that's in a DSLR is like that big. And that basically just comes with some issues that involve things like signal-to-noise ratio and other electrical engineering stuff that's way above my pay grade. The bottom line is that an iPhone will take wonderful pictures, but it craves light. Lots and lots of light. Now, I have an advantage because if you, looked, if you could look right over here to the right of my workbench, I have a very large window that's about uh, five foot square. So during the daytime, I always have a lot of light. At night, not so much, because the only light that I use is the one that's directly over my bench. And here is what that is. And this is also my recommendation for what kind of light you want. This thing is um, one that I got on eBay, uh, not eBay, sorry, Amazon. It is a, uh, a three-tube fluorescent. It was about 129 bucks. I forget the exact name of it. I'll try to look that up and post it or talk about it before the end of this video. But yeah, it does sound like a lot of money, but I am a firm believer in the idea that you can never have too much light 
when it comes to doing this kind of work. I see guys who are trying to get by with little bitty cheapo desk lamps, um, you know, or LEDs or the $10 solution. And look, I get it. It's money you got to spend and it's tough to put a value on it, but it will show up in your work. Uh, I see all the time guys posting work where it's obvious that they are just not seeing the, uh, the issues. And a lot of that comes from just not having enough candle power. Uh, so whether it's this one that I just showed you or some something else, the bottom line with iPhone, with with camera phone photography at your workbench and really with doing good quality work is lots and lots and lots of light. Now, having said that, I have plenty of light right now during the daytime with the lamp up there where it where it was, but. If I was going to photograph, let's say, this wheel, um, and it was nighttime, I wouldn't hesitate to bring the lamp right down here like that, where it is shining directly on top of what I'm doing. It's like six inches away. You put it over here where it's an even brighter spot. Um, and that's the great thing about having a lamp on an adjustable arm is getting the light right down there where you can make a good picture. So that is uh, obviously requirement number two after uh, having uh, a camera phone. Now, another thing that can help you out, you don't have to do it, but if you really want to be super cool and you have one handy then a sheet of white paper is also an excellent thing all right and all you have to do is i'm going to use my one two three blocks because they're nice and heavy and they will prop this sheet of paper up very well is just like that Okay, maybe not just like that. Let's try to get it a little bit more curved. Okay, a sheet of paper, a couple of one, two, three blocks, and a file. And try not to wreck anything or break anything while I'm doing the demo. Okay, now you can see what I've got going on here, okay? So, there we go. Now, that automatically makes a nice clean backdrop that's uncluttered by all the other crap on your bench. This is one of the other things that, that makes photos a lot harder to uh, look at and interpret for quality. If you take the picture from far away or if you're including all of this other garbage that's on your workbench, it's just a distraction. So. If you really want people to be able to, to get a good look at the thing, then just do this. Put it on a seamless white background that you can make instantly with a sheet of paper. So now that, now that we've got the setup done, let me talk about actually taking the photo. And I'm gonna get this stuff out of the way just to keep things simple. Okay, now really once you've got lots and lots of light, the taking the photo part it should be trivial. But let's talk about that. Okay, now, the iPhone will focus f only from about, what is that, about five inches away, I think. So you have a couple of choices there. See, if I get much closer, it's just not gonna f make a clearly sharp picture uh, of the top surface of that that wheel. If you, you can try to make it focus by holding your finger on the thing that you want to be in focus and you can see that it creates that yellow uh, AEAF lock. And what that AEAF means is auto exposure, auto focus lock. That means that it's gonna pay attention to the thing that you are pointing at basically to decide how to focus and set the automatic exposure. But there's a limit, see? When I'm that close, it just isn't gonna do it. So what you, 
you have two choices. Either photograph from back here and then crop it, or if you do the two finger gesture, you can zoom in from a distance and get something that fills the frame better. And then you can use the, the little slider if you need to. Okay, so once we've taken the photo and, when, and it's nice and, and uh, full frame like that, there's a couple of things that you can do to make it even better. All right, if you look on the bottom of your iPhone, you've got, shut up compressor. Okay, you've got the edit function down here at the bottom, okay? The most obvious thing is to be able to crop and rotate. I prefer the square format, so I go and I tell it square, and you can see, you can move it all around. I wanna make the, if you wanna make it line up with the grid lines on your bench, whatever, anyway, there you go, cropped. Perfect, done. Now that's good enough, obviously. That shows the detail really well, but let's say that we needed to uh, edit the exposure. That's the simplest thing, all right? So if you go right here, you've got a full menu of things that you can adjust. And really, light is about the only one you should need to mess with. Tap that, you get this whole menu full of options. Okay, let's say we wanna make the exposure a little brighter. You click that, you slide this, and there you go, a slightly more exposure. Honestly, for a Facebook photo of work in progress, you should never have to do a whole lot more than that. I will occasionally go over here and open up the shadows a little bit, but you have to be careful with that because the data can get a little sketchy and things can fall apart if you do it too much, but that occasionally is useful. Honestly, for Facebook, those are the only two things that I will ever tinker with on an iPhone photo. If you, um, however, if you really feel the need to do more editing, then there are a couple of apps that are pretty good. If you go over here, okay, I have, uh, I, I have my favorite one right here. This is called Snapseed. Snapseed is excellent, okay? Um, I can, this is a new iPhone, sorry, and, and by the way, this is an iPhone 8S, um, but, and it has a great camera, but the 6S is a good camera, the 4 is a good camera, so let's open the photo that I just took, all right? Now, I've got a bunch of tools here that I can use, crop, I can adjust the white balance, um, there's even uh, brushes that you can use. I mean, this this app is great because it really gives you a lot of the functionality that you would have um, in a full-fledged photo editor just on your phone, and it's easy to use. Um, there are others, but this is the one that, based on my own photography experience, my general level of laziness, um, and uh, all of that, this is the one that I like the most. So you can see I just turned this photo black and white. You can do you know different things to it. You can change the look of it, whatever. Um, and then you just save it, you export it. Uh, export creates a copy with permanent changes. And then you, uh, you have that ready to post for all your buddies on, uh, on the web. So look, really, it's as simple as that. But there is one more step that I'm going to show you that actually I need to be um, in front of my computer for. And this is um, how to upload your photos so that they're big enough that people can appreciate. I think a lot of people just sort of assume that everyone is looking at photos on their phone. Um, and I think in large part that's, that's pretty true. Um, and so if you're doing that, all right, let's look at this photo, okay? Chris Becker has posted a picture to the group um, and we want to check it out, okay? Now, obviously when you look at that photo on your phone, you can zoom in and you can get a really good look at it. I mean, up to a certain point. It, you know, it bounces back when you try to zoom beyond that point. But that's an obviously nice feature of looking at model photos 
on your phone. You can zoom in. But number one, not everybody is looking at photos on their phone. Um, some people are still using this old-fashioned thing called a computer. And number two, if you've taken the photo up close, it's great because you can zoom in and you can see it pretty well. But if you've taken the picture from far away, like this one was, there's still a limit to how much you can uh, actually magnify it. So what I'm going to show you is how to make sure that uh, your photos are uploaded in the largest size possible because these may or may not be as large when I look at them on a computer screen. So let's go check that out. Okay, so here we go. These are the pictures that uh, we were looking at a second ago on my iPhone. Now I'm looking at them on the full glorious screen of my 27 inch iMac. So let's click on this one and see how large it is. Okay, this is what I was talking about. See how it is not taking up the full amount of the screen, okay? This is making me uh, very itchy because I'm sacrificing all of these amazing 4K pixels that I paid a shit ton of money for, um, and I'm frustrated because this is really cool and I wanna see it better, but uh, I don't have the option on my screen to zoom in. Now there may be one if I'm on an iPad or on a laptop or you have a touch screen or whatever. But let's just assume that I don't. Let's look at this one. Let's see how big it is. Up oh, and there again, it is small. All right, now let's take a look at something else. Uh, let's look at McDougal's photo here. See how enormous and close up and well lit that is? This is exactly the kind of thing I'm talking about. Now, the reason that this photo is in full resolution on my screen is because Matt has the upload in HD option selected. How do you do that? Okay, if you're on your Facebook page, and I'm gonna show you on my computer, I'm not sure how you do this on your phone or if it's even possible, but if you just Google upload to Facebook in HD, you'll find this. Now it's pretty simple. You go over to Photos, you tell it that you want to create an album, and it doesn't. It, this doesn't have to be a real album. Let's just say that you're gonna create one, and I'm gonna use um, one of these things from my meme directory from uh, my computer. Okay, so there we go. Now, when you do this, and I'm uh, getting proven wrong right now because there should be an option here over on the left-hand side to upload in HD. And I don't know why there's not. Um, it may be because I've already got it set. So let me try again with a larger photo and see if that changes it. Okay, let's create an album. And this time I'm gonna go to a directory where I know that I have full resolution images. This is my phantom, phantom directory. Let's pick that one and see. Oh, okay. I don't know if you noticed that but it said uploading in high resolution while it was doing it. And that's because I have the option selected. And I think that the reason it's not giving me that option is because I've already done that. At any rate, the point being is um, when you do this, it should be set permanently across all of your platforms um, so that no matter whether you are uploading from your computer from your phone, from your iPad, whatever the case may be, you will be able to see those images show up uh, in high resolution. Now, if you don't do that, the maximum resolution that you can upload from uh, your phone is 900 pixels wide, so you're always going to be limited. If you do have the upload in HD option set, then you will see that 
your maximum resolution is 2048 wide. Um, so what I do is, as you can see with my phantom photo, I uploaded uh, those images full resolution from my camera, and they were 10 megapixel images, so they're like 30, what you know, 3,000 and whatever uh, pixels wide, and Facebook does downsize them to 2048. But I don't ever see a, a noticeable decrease in quality from doing that. And it means that you don't have to have multiple versions. Um, I basically have one set of photos that I, that I produce at full resolution that I use in my videos and in all of my uploads and whatever I need them for. Now this is a picture that I took on my iPhone yesterday while I was watching uh, some YouTube early in the morning. And you can see that even though the normal limit is 900 pixels, because I have the upload in HD function set, I get a full res image. So there you go. That's how you do it. Okay, there you go. Now, I know some of you guys are probably like, why do we need a video about how to do this? I understand. But trust me, there are plenty of, of guys who are confused or, or, or frustrated by this. Um, in fact, the reason that I decided to do this was because this very morning, there were two or three guys in our group who were like, bemoaning the idea that they had to go and learn a whole other hobby, photography, and buy a bunch of equipment in order to take good photos to, uh, to be able to show their work. And that's just not the case. Uh, there are plenty of things that as model makers we can overcomplicate, but taking pictures does not have to be one of them. Hopefully you can see from this quick demonstration that it really is pretty simple. It's just that you have to do a couple of things right in order to make it uh, to, to, to make it work. And the number one thing, and this is really true with all photography, but uh, especially with taking uh, uh, pictures uh, with, with a, a camera phone, you just gotta have a lot of light. That's really all it boils down to. You don't have to have a fancy setup. You don't have to use your flash. In fact, you definitely should not use your flash because that will make your work look worse than it is. Um, you just need, uh, like I showed you, my task lamp right there. Whatever the equivalent is for you, you just need a lot of light. That's, that's really what it boils down to. Um, and again, the reason that I'm doing this is because, you know, you work hard on your projects and you want to be able to show them off and you want people to be able to appreciate them and you want to be able to get good feedback. And in order for people to do that, they've got to be able to see what you're doing. So uh, I hope that you guys uh, find this useful and um, that we'll see lots of yeah thanks compressor anyway i hope that we'll see lots of much better pictures uh in model making groups going forward all right guys as always thanks for watching much love